All right, everyone. As you might already know, a couple of days ago, Angular version 8 was released. This was a major release spanning across the framework itself, Angular Material, and Angular CLI. So all the three are now version 8. Since Angular has major version upgrades twice a year, it might be slightly concerning for us all as developers. And it is much more of a concern for a beginner starting out on this Angular series in my channel. So what I want to do in this video is go through some of the new features and breaking changes related to version 8 and most importantly reassure you that the series still holds good for Angular version 8. Alright, let's begin with the new features. The first one is differential loading. Differential loading is a technique which will automatically make your Angular apps more performant. Now how does this work? Well it turns out with version 8, when you build an application for production, two bundles are created. One bundle for the modern browsers that support ES6 and above, and another separate bundle for older browsers that only support ES5. When your app is opened in the browser, the correct bundle is automatically loaded, which means for the newer browsers which do support ES6+, Plus, they now will be loading lesser code and lesser number of polyfills which will be a great performance improvement. From what has been gathered so far, the bundle size reduced by 7-20% to 20 depending on the amount of modern JavaScript features that were being made use of. Again, this is a feature which doesn't involve you to add any code. Simply running ng-build-prod will take care of everything. So differential loading for performance improvement. The second feature is dynamic imports for lazy routes. Let me quickly give you an overview of lazy loading routes in Angular. When you create a decent sized application, you're going to have a lot of routes with lots of feature modules. Loading the bundle for your entire application when the user is visiting your site might take a toll on the performance. Instead, what would be better is if we initially load the code that is necessary only for the initial routes and then load the code for the other routes only when the user navigates to those routes for the first time. Doing so will again improve the performance. With version 8, there is nothing new in the concept of lazy loading itself, but the syntax has changed. Previously, the syntax was involving a custom string. So, a lazy loaded route config would look something like this. Now in version 8 though, lazy loaded routes will use the standard dynamic import syntax. So the syntax which was custom to Angular has now been migrated into the industry standard. What this allows is for editors and linters to complain if there is a mistake. If you are not quite familiar with lazy loading, don't worry about it. If you are currently using lazy routes, the ng upgrade command should take care of the change in syntax for you. So that is the second feature, dynamic imports for lazy routes. The next topic is about IV. IV is the rendering engine that the Angular team is currently working on. It basically handles translating the templates and components into regular HTML and JavaScript that the browsers can understand. Ivy is the latest rendering engine and will enable cool features in the future, but for now, even with the release of version 8, it is still not stable. Currently, the focus is to ensure nothing breaks in the existing applications. Probably with version 9, it might be the default engine, but Angular 8 does offer a switch to opt in to IV. When generating a new application using the CLI, you can add the enable IV flag. So ng new demo, which is the project name, followed by the option 
enable IV. IV has the potential to generate considerably smaller bundles, make incremental compilation easier, and is also going to be the basis for future innovations in Angular. Fingers crossed it will soon be stable. Finally, a quick note on Bazel. Bazel is basically a build tool, which again, like Ivy, is still only experimental in version 8. So I am not going to go into the details of Bazel, but I would recommend you to give it a 5 minute read just to get an understanding of what it actually is. So Ivy and Bazel, both something to keep an eye out for in the next release. Alright now, let's talk about the breaking changes. The first one is with the TypeScript version. With Angular 8, you need to ensure your TypeScript version is 3.4. Any version below is not supported anymore. On similar lines, the update documentation also suggests we use node version 12 or later. So make sure you have that as well. Next thing, which is in fact deprecated with version 8, is the legacy HTTP module and the HTTP service. In version 8, make sure to switch to HTTP client module and the HTTP client service. The last one is about view child and content child. Before version 8, the syntax for view child would be something like view child, then the string foo, and then of type element ref. But with version 8, we are now required to add a static flag with a boolean value. If the value is set to true, it means that the query results would be available in ng on init rather than ng after view init. Now the document does state that with version 9 of Angular, static will have a default value of false, but only for version 8, we need to specify this static value. Alright, those are the breaking changes. As you see, from a developer's point of view, there is no need to worry. Simple changes that can easily be incorporated based on your app. What I do recommend though, is to go to update.angular.io and follow the guide when updating your Angular application. All right, now that we have seen the changes with version 8, let's talk about the series in this channel. With the Angular tutorial playlist, every concept you learn still holds good. The one section that needs your attention is services and HTTP. Videos on services and HTTP were updated when the version changed from 5 to 6. So my advice for you is to watch videos 17 through 22 for understanding the concepts and then watch video number 31 in the playlist for the updated code. Apart from that, every video in this series can be consumed without any hesitation. There is also a more advanced Angular component interaction series in the channel where you need to take care when using the view child decorator. You just have to include the static option set to false. Well, that is pretty much what I wanted to cover. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to enable notifications.